Yeah, then get rid of it. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, sorry, okay, Jason. Police officers often make such a blunder that they have to be immediately corrected by their superiors. Today, we'll be looking at three such instances where corrupt cops were put back in their place by their bosses. Interestingly, in the first case, the roles seemed to reverse. On October 9th, 2023, a drunk driver crashed into several parked cars on Main Street, Bradley Beach. As several police officers made their way out to inspect the DWI in question, they were surprised to see the police chief arriving in civil clothes. Thanks. I don't know, I'm asking you if he's RMA or not. Oh, yeah, no. What? Yeah. I get that. I'm not saying you aren't. I just want to make sure your head is in the fucking thing that we need to be aware of. Chief Leonard Guida, who had arrived uninvited, pulled over one of the sergeants working over the case and initiated a bizarre argument. I can't get any. Can you tell me your Chief. first name at least? Get a, sh a jacket on the, the stuff fit to be worn. What's on the back of it? What do you mean? Look at the tell me what's on the back of it. Oh, uh, it washed off. Yeah, then get rid of it. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, sergeant for God. Okay, Chief. Let me work this TWI, okay? The chief embarrassed the poor sergeant in front of all the cops just on a matter of his jacket. However, the chief had no idea who he was up against as he was about to learn it the hard way. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Get over here. I'm on a DWI. Chief, I'm working. Get, get I don't have time to argue get, about a jacket, get, get okay? Don't you touch me. me. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have a problem? You grab me. What? Now get out of here before you get a problem. Seeing the heated situation, a couple of officers also joined in as they tried to hold down the ignorant chief. The sergeant, however, was still not done with it, as he made sure to let his feelings known. No, you're gonna go in. Drunk again. Whose kids are these? They're mine. Get out of here. No. Chief, get out of here or you're gonna get locked up. No. Chief, you're gonna get locked up. You grabbed me. I asked you three times I'm to leave me alone. Here. You're I'm obstructing here. my DWI. Billy, really, come over here. Right, let him go. Chief Leonard was still persistent in making matters worse for the sergeant as he pulled him over once again. This time, the conversation was even more hilarious. I know. I we do. Know. All right, you're going to have to go inside. No, how about we do no, this? No, 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 no. But we go Billy, inside. Billy, you're going to have to go inside right now with me. You're gonna have to go inside and and we're gonna a serious be, collision. Billy, you're not doing anything when I'm on the scene, okay? You should know better than this, my friend. No. Listen you to me. Grab me. No, I said you're come out of over line. here. You're out of line, you grab me. Some Billy, video. Billy, Some video. I'm Billy, not gonna argue with it. I have a crash Billy, to work. Billy, I have a job Billy, to do. You're okay? relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Okay. You're relieved. Hold on. No, 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 no. Billy, you have to understand something. You're relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Go home in the headquarters and wait for me. The chief had no regard for the sergeant and the case he was dealing with as he kept on issuing confusing and unlawful commands. Sergeant William kept on explaining that he had a crash to work on and remained clear of his duties. However, the chief had too much to drink that night and shamelessly ridiculed the law as he passed on his judgment in the middle of the case. Yes, yeah, so I'm crash. No, no, Billy, you're relieved. I have Billy. officers here, Billy. right here. They Billy. could get waffle because my car is Billy. blocking it. Billy, you're relieved. No, Chief. No, Billy. Please, Billy. Don't. You're suspended, Billy. I'm you're suspended? suspended? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm suspended. Yeah. I'm going home. Yes. Billy, come here. I'm going home. You're going, I, no, we you can't talk. I'm suspended. No, no, no. No, no, no I'm no. suspended. I'm you're going, going to home. And you're going to wait for me there. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna suspended. Go you're gonna go I'm going home. home. You're going to go in the headquarters and wait for me there. Let me work my crash. No, no, this no, is why no, I'm here. Billy, you're suspended. All right, if I'm suspended, then I'm not going to wait inside. Nothing more. No, 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 Billy. You have to. Let me explain. Billy, you're suspended. The sergeant was visibly infuriated by this treatment, but remained committed to fulfilling his duties as he prepared to depart the scene. Wait for me in there. That's an order. 
Can you do me a favor? Can you put your car where my car is so our officers and first aid don't get run over, please? Thank you. The corrupt chief then got towards another police officer, attempting to justify his actions, trying to make amends for what he had done. See what happened here? Yes, chief. What, is, what happened? There's some type of exchange between you and Sergeant Major. Well, we're going to talk about that later. Everybody's got that. Really, really suspended. You already got this. What, is, what do you have here? What do you have? Wow. We're trying to figure that out, Chief. Okay. However, the Chief was still not done with Sergeant William as he approached him for one last time. This time, the conversation took a more personal turn. Oh, shit. Hey, I'm in there. The yes, you're going to meet me in there. Go and put the door to me right now. There's nowhere to put her. She's going to ruin things. Okay, we'll leave her in there. Go in. Go in. Go in. I'm going. I got people on the road. I want to make sure they're safe. I don't want to run you over, so watch out. No, 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 no. Come on. Go ahead. You know I love you. Come on. I know. What? No, no, stop, What's wrong with you? Stop. Billy. Why would you stop. do that to me? Stop. Billy. The chief said that he loved him, and the conversation between them indicated a personal connection between them. However, this raises an alarming question. Why would he treat someone he knows both personally and professionally in such a manner? you got enough problems already, please. Following the incident, the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office took notice and initiated an investigation. Chief Leonard Guida was immediately placed on administrative leave. However, he continued to draw his pay, which was reported to be $202,500 annually. A few days later, Chief Guida announced his retirement, which occurred six months earlier than previously announced. On the other hand, Sergeant William Major was allowed to resume his job without any suspension or problem. The chief certainly got what he deserved, but this next officer was immediately punished at his job. The person you just saw was an Albuquerque police officer, Jeffrey Wharton. Wharton did a horrific thing as he beat his girlfriend so badly that she got several gashes on her head and face. She was injured so badly that she had to be taken to a hospital where it was discovered that she also had a brain bleed. However, the next morning, Wharton shamelessly came back to work at the Rio Rancho Police Department. However, he had no idea that the officers were already waiting for him with a felony arrest warrant. Wharton came in fully prepared in full uniform. However, he had no idea that everything was about to be taken off. The most fitting response was that it was a female officer who proceeded with this. The officers made sure to take off his belt and his radios. However, he still had the police shirt on, and they used another humiliating tactic to take that off.
here, come right, right, right here. Pinch him. There we go. There we go. Take that. And... The officers then proceeded to search Wharton as he stood there helplessly. The domestic violence incident was even reported in the ring doorbell system, and it was disturbing to watch. Moments later, another officer appeared in front of Wharton, who explained to him the charges he was going to prison for. Hi, Jeffrey. I'm Detective Hatch. I'm here with this comment. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an explanation as to why we're here. Okay. So right now we do have a warrant for your arrest. It's for aggravated battery. It's a false number. Um, two counts of that. Uh, kidnapping and, and interference with communication. Okay. So those are the charges that are pending right now. Um, I do want to give you the opportunity to talk to us and tell us your side of the story. Um, do you want to take that opportunity? Not after hearing that. Okay. Shortly after, the disgraced officer was taken to the police cruiser when he was taken to the Sandoval County Detention Center. Officer Wharton sat in the detention center with his head in his hands, looking absolutely dejected. However, safe to say that he deserved every punishment headed his way. He was eventually booked into the prison on charges of kidnapping, aggravated battery, aggravated battery of a household member, tampering with evidence, and a few other ones. Shortly after this arrest, Wharton resigned from the Albuquerque Police Department. During the trial, Wharton pleaded guilty to aggravated battery, and he was eventually sentenced to three years of probation. At this point, Wharton had served six months in jail, and he was then eventually released. It's reassuring to see officers getting held accountable for their actions. And that's what happened to this young police officer. Did you be able to drink? Uh, I had a, I had a beer. Just one? All yes, night? Sir. Yes, sir. Around half past one on December 3rd, 2023, a New Mexico state police officer pulled over a driver who was going 90 miles per hour in a 65 miles per hour zone. The officer then moved over to start his investigation. How's it going? Not too bad. Lost the New Mexico state police. You understand the reason I'm stopping you? Uh, Way too fast. What's up with the speed? Uh, got you. Driver's license? Just your driver's license. Step on another vehicle for please. Any weapons? Go sit by now. As the officer requested the driver's identification, he handed over his military ID to him. It was later discovered that the driver was another New Mexico State Police officer, Edgar Madrid, who had recently joined the force. Uh, about 85, sir. 90? Okay. 65, what's the rush? Uh, just trying to get us off. Okay. Why are you really walking away from me? Oh, no reason, sir. Okay. How much have you had a drink? Uh, I had a, I had a beer. Just one? All yes, night? Sir. Yes, sir. You lying to me? No, sir. Cool. Ask your side. Step forward. 
Any head injuries? Yes, sir. Any contacts? Yes, sir. Okay, put your feet well, I, I have my contacts. Thanks. Soft or hard? Uh, so, go take a step forward for me, please. The officer straight away noticed Madrid's watery eyes, and he even smelled of alcohol. Therefore, he waited no more before conducting a series of field sobriety tests, starting off with this one. Madrid didn't seem to follow the officer's finger accurately, suggesting that he may be well over the limit. Therefore, the officer quickly asked him to do the second walk and turn test. Edgar, hands out your pocket for me, please. I'm gonna have you put your left foot on that imaginary line. Take your right foot, place it directly in front of your left foot, touching heel to toe. Stop right there. Hands directly at your side. I will need you to remain in that position there, so I'm gonna give you all the instructions. You will not start the test I tell you to do so. Do you understand? Sir. Okay, face me, put your feet together just like mine. Mr. Madrid, I'm gonna have you remain in that position there. You will not start to test how I tell you to do so. Do you understand? Yes. And Madrid seemed to have done pretty well in the walk test. However, the investigating officer was still not pretty sure about this, and he proceeded with another one. I tell you to stop. You have any questions? No. no questions at all? Go and begin, sir. 2001, 2002, 2009. 2010, stop. The officer went over to Madrid for one last time, urging him to tell the truth about how much he had to drink. Surprisingly, this time, Madrid had a different answer. Mr. Madrid, yes, it's been more than one drink, wasn't it? Yes, sir. How much have you really had to drink? Uh, had two cores light and dirty bourbon, sir. Two dirty, two? Yeah. You shouldn't be driving, you know that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And this is gonna hurt, it really is. But you know all the fields, right? Yes, sir. This is, it's sad, it really is. Turn around, put your hands behind your back, leave them there. Madrid, 1.40 a.m., you are being arrested for DWI. Officer felt a sense of disappointment, but he knew that he had to make the arrest, especially since Madrid himself admitted to having drunk way over the limits. Therefore, the officer proceeded to search him. Go ahead, spin your feet. You're under arrest for driving one under the influence of intoxicating liquor and or drugs. The New Mexico Applied Consent Act requires you to submit to a breath test to determine the alcohol content of your blood. The officer then asked Madrid for a breath test to further confirm the DUI suspicion. However, the officer's response to this request was rather unusual. Do you agree to take our test? Yes or no? No, sir. I will continue. I cannot force you to take our test, but if you refuse, you will lose your New Mexico driver's license or non-resident operating privilege for one year. If you are convicted in court of driving one under the influence, you may also receive a greater sentence because you refuse to be tested. Do you understand? Do you now agree to be tested? We'll get through your actions and refuse to be tested at this time. Mr. Majid, open your mouth, please. Stick your tongue out. Lift it up to the sky. Do you have anything in your mouth to eat, drink, smoke? The officer finally proceeded to arrest him and make him sit in the back of the police cruiser before taking him to the police station. See? Just make note at 0140 hours to the 
Madrid was arrested and charged with aggravated DWI, speeding, driver's license not in possession, and no proof of insurance. He was immediately placed on administrative leave, and the New Mexico State Police Chief Troy Weisler sent out a statement regarding Madrid. Madrid later went on to plead not guilty, and a hearing was set later. Well, this brings us to the end of our video. Today, we see cases where corrupt police officers were immediately corrected by their supervisors, colleagues, or even juniors. It's always refreshing to witness law enforcement officers being held accountable for their actions. This serves as a reminder that they are not above the law and must conduct themselves accordingly. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.